tonight in the Alamo City of San Antonio. It's out with the old year and in with the new at the state-of-the-art Alamo Dome. California coach Keith Gilbertson had reason to be excited about his high-powered offense that led the Golden Bears to a 5-0 start. Then quarterback Dave Barr went down with a shoulder injury, and the Bears lost four in a row. Now Barr is back and leading a balanced attack which can run any opponent into the ground. The Iowa Hawkeyes also struggled in midseason, but they intercepted a lost year with four consecutive wins. And the thrill of giving legendary head coach Hayden Fry his 200th victory. Tonight, Fry leads Iowa into a bowl game for the 11th time in the last 13 years. And tonight, the city of San Antonio plays host to a bowl game for the first time since 1947. It's the first Builders Square Alamo Bowl. A crowd of more than 50,000 is expected to watch California take on Iowa. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge, and it's great to have you with us as ESPN rings in the new year with the Alamo Bowl. California comes into this one as the favorite at 8-4. and four. They won their last three games of the regular season, led by quarterback Dave Barr. The junior was second in the entire country this year in pass efficiency behind only Trent Dilfer of Fresno State. Well, not only is he efficient and completes a high percentage of passes, he's also able to make the big play. This year he's thrown 26 completions, over 25 yards, and a school record 21 touchdown passes. It's a balanced Cal attack and a tough challenge tonight for the Iowa defense. They do feature two of the best pass rushers in the Big Ten in their bookend ends, Larry Blue and Mike Wells. Well, these two guys, Sean, are about as opposite as you can get in terms of personality, but not in terms of productivity. Two of the best in the Big Ten in terms of getting after the quarterback. And here's an interesting number. The Hawkeyes had 36 sacks on the season, but all but nine of them came in those final four ball games. The Hawkeyes won their final four to get into this bowl game at six and five. Well, let's check in down to the field now with Dave Sim. Thank you, Sean. Happy New Year, everybody. We got a chance for some great body slamming action tonight. Big matchup in the trenches, of course. Todd Stussy, number 75 for Cal. 6'6", 305, and here they come. He goes 6'6", 305. He benches 500. Squad 600. He's going against Mike Wells. Watch for that matchup tonight. Well, if Stussy blocks as well as the Bears just did on Dave Sims, Cal should have a good time of it tonight on New Year's Eve. Cal and Iowa, the first ever Alamo Bowl from San Antonio, right after this. Welcome back to the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. It opened in May. It was built at a cost of $183 million. Keith Gilberton in his second year at Cal has led the Golden Bears to his first bowl game as a head coach. Four and seven a year ago, eight and four this season for Gilberton and the Golden Bears. And tonight, Hayden Fry returns to his native state of Texas. He's from Odessa, hasn't coached a game in this state since 1978 when he was the head coach at North Texas State. Now in his 15th season as head man of the Hawkeyes. California won the toss and elected to receive. And Brian Hurley will kick off for Iowa. He's a red shirt freshman and a walk-on who took over the kickoff chores in the fourth game of the season. And we're underway. A short kick handled by Gerard Cherry. And he's down at the 29-yard line. A 13-yard return for Cherry. For California on offense, Lindsey Chapman rushed for 1,037 yards this year. He's the sixth Cal running back to reach 1,000 yards in a season. Mike Caldwell, the senior, is the Bears' leading receiver with 55 this season. And up front, Dave Sims told you about Todd Stussy, a first-team All-American. He's making his 47th straight start tonight. That's a Cal record. Dave Barr, the junior from Concord, California. On the first play from scrimmage, swings it off to Lindsey Chapman. And he's down just short of the 35-yard line, a gain of six. For the Hawkeyes on defense. 
Parker Wildeman, in the words of defensive coordinator Bill Brazier, is a perpetual motion guy. We'll watch for that motion tonight. Linebacker Mike Daly is the Hawkeyes' leading tackler this season. And Jason Olenzak is a two-year starter and leading tackler among those in the secondary. The Chapman on the ground this time. And he's close to a first down. Flag fly. Chapman did a good job of avoiding the tackle in the backfield to Damian Robinson. Well, what Chapman accomplished this year is no easy task. He's only the sixth cow back in history to go for over 1,000 yards. And right there you can see very elusive and strong, able to make people miss and also break arm tackles. Face pass, five yards, pass to the end of the run, first down. The officials tonight on the Western Athletic Conference, and the referee is Gene Wirtz. So a five-yard face mask penalty against the Hawkeyes. Moves the ball out to the Cal 45, first and 10 for the Bears. The Cal coaches indicated that offensively they wanted to establish the run, but in order to do that, they wanted to open up the game early. This would be a good situation for them to try to go deep down the field right now against the zone pass defensive Iowa. the 35-yard line. Chris Webb, the sophomore, threw down par for a loss of 11. Well, how many times have you ever heard about this? You're, you're so concerned about one guy, Mike Wells, that the other defensive end comes in and makes a play. And right there, Chris Webb does a great job coming right inside the block of the right tackle, Brian Thury, and makes the big sack. Webb joined the Hawkeyes as a walk-on this fall and earned a scholarship before they played their first game of the season. On second and 21, back to Chapman. And he's tackled at the 39-yard line by Mike Daly. Daly, the leading tackle for the Hawkeyes this year, had 115, including 13 in the season finale against Minnesota. That was the game in which Hayden Fry earned his 200th career victory. Both of these teams feature a very active middle linebacker. When Cal goes on defense, we'll see Jarrett Will Willard, who led the pack for the last two years. Both these guys fly around the field and make a lot of plays. On third and 17, Barr going deep for Caldwell has him. Down to the Iowa 25-yard line. A gain of 32. Well, it's no question that Mike Caldwell is the go-to guy for Dave Barr, and this time they go with a little man under coverage. You can see right off the bat, Pat Boone, number four, is beat by Caldwell, and Barr reads the blitz, he reads the pressure, he sees the man-to-man -man coverage, and goes to his favorite target. There was no hesitation in Dave Barr right there. He knew he was going to Caldwell the whole way. Caldwell's been labeled a possession receiver, but offensive coordinator Denny Schuler says all he does is run right by guys, even with his 4 6 five speed in the 40. He probably perpetuates that rumor about being slow as much as anybody. Chapman threw a good hole. He was tripped up at the 21. After a gain of four, again with Mike Daly, credited with the tackle. This offensive line is thought by many to be the best in the Pac-10, featuring the All-American Stussy. They've also got a, a big guy in there, Kevin Kelly, the center, Eric Mallon, the right guard. They do a nice job opening a hole in there for Chapman. There's Todd Stussy. Cal coaches think he'll be a late first-round draft pick in the NFL this spring. Chapman tried to bounce it outside and was stopped at the 20. After a gain of one, Damian Robinson on the play, as was Larry Blue. Keith Gilbertson, a 45-year-old native of Snohomish, Washington. He was the offensive coordinator at the University of Washington before becoming the head man at Cal. Found out very quickly what it was like to be a head coach last year when the Bears had a disappointing four and seven season, and he had a number of critics, but those were quieted with the performance of Cal this year. On third down, they need five for a first down. Barr has a man open too high. He was looking for Damian Simeon. 
and a nice change up that time by defensive coordinator Bill Brazier of Iowa. The first third down situation, they came with pressure. They went with the blitz, and Barr read it and hit Caldwell. This third down, they dropped into a zone coverage, and Barr didn't have anywhere to go with the football. Nice change of pace by the defense of Iowa. So it's Doug Bryan on to try a field goal of 37 yards. He's had an outstanding senior season, 15 out of 18, and has 53 field goals in his career, breaking the school record held previously by Jim Breach, the longtime Bengal. And make it 16 out of 19 for Doug Bryan. And Cal is first on the board in the first Builder Square Alamo Bowl. 10.52 left in the first quarter. The Golden Bears three, and the Hawkeyes nothing. The 1993 Builder Square Alamo Bowl is brought to you by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives, and by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Just a couple of blocks from the Alamo Dome, the Alamo, built in the mid-1700s. Of course, the scene of the battle in 1836 that cost... 183 Texans, their lives in an invasion by the Mexicans. Yesterday, Hayden Fry was asked if returning to Texas, he felt that his team during the season and winning the last four to get in a bowl game had shown the kind of courage that the Texans demonstrated at the Alamo. He said, well, I appreciate the comparison, but let's not forget, all the Texans died at the Alamo. He said there was no back door at the Alamo. Well, he wasn't sure there'd be a back door at the Alamo Dome tonight. His team's down three to nothing as Doug Bryan kicks off very high and handled by Ryan Terry at the one yard line. Right up the middle and a good return out to the 26, tackled by Joshua Moore. Let's meet Iowa on offense. Tonight, true freshman Cedric Shaw returns to his home state. He set the Iowa freshman rushing record this season. Harold Jasper is the Hawkeyes' best offensive player, in the words of Cal defensive coordinator Artie Gigantino. The offensive line struggled early, but gets better as the season progressed. Freshman Ross Verba faces a challenge at left tackle tonight against Cal's speedy outside pass rush. Yeah, Verba will be a key guy to watch. He's just a freshman. He was actually a tight end when the fall camp started. They moved him to that vulnerable left tackle spot. A key matchup tonight. On the first play of the night for Iowa, they give it to the fullback, Cliff King. And he was stopped after a short game by Eric Zomal. For the Bears on defense, Reagan Upshaw is a true freshman. He had seven and a half sacks this season. Jared Willard was by far the leading tackler for Cal. He had 89 more tackles than any of his teammates this year. And you just heard the name of Eric Zomal who made the first tackle of the game for Cal. He was the first team all pack 10 safety this season. And you can see the cat and mouse game beginning now. Cal showing blitz, now they're falling out of it. And on second and seven, Burmeister is off the mark with his first pass attempt of the night, looking for Cedric Shaw. And see, now Burmeister just has to be patient up there. He's got to be calm and go with the plays that are called sometimes. That time, Cal suckered him into going to a blitz call. He audible to a blitz read, then they dropped into zone, and he really didn't have anything for the completion. You notice Keith Gilbertson was with the Huskies prior to his arrival. Also spent years as head coach at the University of Idaho. From 86 through 88, he succeeded Dennis Erickson. And Erickson went on to Washington State. Third and seven. With ten minutes left in the first quarter, the Bears blitz. Burmeister through the hands of Shaw. Like the blitz, Burmeister had time, and Cedric should have held on to that one. Yeah, that's a catch that Cedric Shaw has to make. When your quarterback's going to hang in the pocket and take a hit like that and still deliver the football, you've got to make that catch. Watch, Burmeister stands tall in the pocket. He knows he's going to get hit, and he just has to kind of give with it there at the end. But that's an awful good stick by Reagan Upshaw at the end of that play. Nick Gallery, another true freshman. That's an excellent job as the punter for Iowa this year, and that's a good catch. Clisby, the return man for Cal. And he is stopped at the 31. John Hartley, number 42, the first man in the play for Iowa. A 49-yard punt, a 9-yard return. Cal back on the attack, leading 3-0 right after this. California leads 3-0. 
An impressive opening sequence on defense for the Cal Bears. They meet on the sideline. Well, Artie Gigantino, who's up in the press box, he's the defensive coordinator relaying his signals down to the troops. And, and Artie, is, he's the kind of guy who's a very aggressive coach, wants to really go at people. He's going to bring the kitchen sink at Burmeister until Burmeister proves that he can beat the blitz. First and ten for Cal. Movement along the line, but no flags. And Chapman gained a yard, and that's all. Lindsey from Marrero, Louisiana. He has about 40 friends and relatives who drove from the New Orleans area to be here at the game tonight. He said just seconds after Cal got the Alamo Bowl bid, his dad was on the phone saying, we better scrounge up a bunch of tickets. You know how a lot of guys probably are glad when the season ends and they get that break between the bowl game. Chapman's probably just the opposite. He finished the season, the last two games, over 140 yards in each game. He scored eight touchdowns in the final two ball games. Second and nine. Barr ran out of time, dropped it off to Chapman with lots of running room into Iowa territory and tackled from behind at the 45-yard line by Mike Daly. That's a gain of 23. That play right there shows the maturity and the development of a quarterback. Dave Barr went to his outlet receiver. All that was was a dump off to Lindsey Chapman. He was looking left the whole way. Now watch, he's going to drop back. He's got his wide receivers to the left. He's looking left. It's not there. Now at the last minute, he feels the rush and said, here's my dump off. I'll get it to the running back. If he can make one guy miss, we get a, a nice gain on the play. Good maturity by Dave Barr. And hasn't taken long for the Bears to demonstrate their big play capability on offense. 32-yard gain on the first drive. That one went for 23. Byers, three out of four passing. That time he handed the ball off to Renard Rutherford, the backup tailback. In the Gator Bowl, Alabama leads North Carolina with 10 minutes to play. By a touchdown. I hope we have a finish in this game as they had at the Peach Bowl tonight. It's instead of from one beautiful new dome to another here on ESPN. Second down, almost 10 to go for a Cal first down. Eight minutes left in the first quarter. 3-0 Bears in the flat complete. And Marty Holly, the fullback, was hit immediately by Matt Hilliard. Mike Wells was kind of dropped off in a pass coverage that time. Something unusual for him, but he actually tripped on the AstroTurf. You know, you got a new dome, you got new turf. It's very sticky out there. And Wells was actually in a position to make a play on that ball had he not tripped and fell down. He had an interception in the Minnesota game. Thought he was going to score a touchdown and got his legs taken out from him right on his way to the goal line. He had visions of superstardom on that play. Third down and seven. Barr, again with lots of time, complete for a first down. Down to the 30-yard line goes Damian Simeon before Scott Clayton knocked him out of bounds. And you can see again, Dave Barr did a very smart thing. He bought himself that extra second or two. You wouldn't think of Dave Barr as a scrambler, and this isn't real, really a scramble. It's just a move, a slight move in the pocket to buy himself some time, see him reset his feet. And he always keeps his eyes downfield, picks up Simeon for the first down. All right, 68% completion for the season. Five out of six tonight for 75 yards. Again, moving along the line. This time there is a flag thrown. And Lindsey Chapman took it down to the 27-yard line. It looked like Iowa was offside. Yeah, they jumped a little bit and weren't able to get back. Iowa is trying to stem right at the end of the play. They're trying to shift their defense to confuse the Cal offense, but you can see they get off sides. They weren't able to get out of the neutral zone in time before the snap. Aiden Fry, 64 years old. There's a contract. Offside defense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. That will take him up to age 70 as Iowa coach. It will probably pack it in then, perhaps sooner if he's not enjoying coaching anymore, but I bet on him being around until age 70. He sure seems like he's enjoying it now. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have any plans of an early retirement anyway. First and five. 6.54 left in the first quarter. California three, Iowa nothing. Chapman running right. On the block of the fullback, Holly. Tripped up at the 21-yard line. 
tackled by Mike Wells, the senior from Arnold, Missouri. Nice play by Scott Sether in there that time, too. Moving along the line of scrimmage, he was the first guy to hit Chapman, knocked his legs down a little bit, and Wells was there to finish him off. But pretty good play on the inside right now by the front four of Iowa. Second and two. Second drive of the game for Cal in their first position with 51 yards and nine plays to set up a field goal by Doug Bryant. Chapman ran into his fullback and lead blocker Hawley, but picked up the first down as he got inside the 20 and is spotted down at the 18-yard line. Iowa cert or California is certainly a balanced offensive attack. They have a phenomenal record since the beginning of 1990. They're 23-3 and one in games that they rush for over 150 yards. Yes, they throw the football. Mike Pulaski was a great quarterback here. Now Dave Barr, but they also like to run the football. And Lindsey Chapman can he can carry the mail for This is Barr picked up where Pulaski left off. Chapman is picked up where Russell White left off. Flags down on this play. Chapman through the middle. And there was movement along the Iowa defensive front. Chapman spotted down at the 13-yard line. Mike offside again. It makes you wonder if Barr is affecting him with his cadence as well. Well, and this drive is also starting to take its toll on the defensive line of Iowa right now. As you can see, Iowa jumped offside. Good snap count again by Dave Barr, but Mike Wells and Scott Sether both signaled to the bench, put their hand up, said, we need a break, we need Outside. a blow. Defense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, it is warm inside the Alamo Dome tonight, and already the Iowa defense has been on the field a while here in the first quarter. See a couple new guys in there already. Including Lloyd Pickle, number 66, who has checked in along the defensive front for Iowa. First and five. Cal of the Iowa 13 already leading three to nothing. Bernard Rutherford, the sophomore, got close to the 10-yard line, stopped short of a first down. They'll mark him down inside the 10, just shy of the nine-yard line. And another smart move right there by Dave Barr. They've gotten two offside penalties by going on a long count and him using a hard snap count in the line of scrimmage. That play they came up and went right on the quick count. First sound, jumped off the ball, went with the play. that he'd make a heady play. The coaches say on Sundays after a game on Saturday, he's always the first man through the door to watch the film even before the coaches arrive. Chapman, good cutback, and he picked up the first down. Down close to the seven-yard line before Scott Hosier, number 54, another one of those reserve defensive linemen, made the tackle. Lindsey Chapman only 5'9", 190, and the Iowa coach was saying the thing that impressed them watching him on film was that he's such a strong inside runner for a man of his size, and we just saw that on the first down run. Part of that is he runs so low to the ground, it's hard to get a solid hit on the guy. Chapman trying to turn the corner, he pulled his way inside the five. Chris Webb made the tackle, number 98. Lindsey says he'd rather block than carry the football. Excellent ratio of scoring inside the 20 this year for Coach Gilbertson's Golden Bears. 46 times out of 52, they put points on the board when inside the 20. The other thing impressive there is it was a lot more touchdowns than it was field goals. When they got in there, they were able to put it in the end zone and not have to settle for three points. They averaged 37 points per game in winning their last three games for the regular season. This is the ninth play of the drive. Chapman backed up at the three-yard line. Mike Daly led the defensive surge and had plenty of help. This is an important drive and series, I think, for the Iowa defense. They, they got to try to hold California to a field goal. This is not a game I don't think they want to get into a shooting match with the Cal offense. They don't want to have to try to outscore them. They want to stay close early in the ball game, get their running game going, get some confidence on offense. They've only had the ball for a few plays here in the first quarter. Cal has dominated the first quarter and held on to the football. Third and 
goal from the four. This drive started at the Cal 31. Barr. All the way back beyond the 20 and finally he threw it away. It was Larry Blue who was nearest to him, but there were a couple of other hot guys on the way as well. Excellent job by Larry Blue. And you could see him break down. He recognized that Dave Barr has the ability to make people miss and buy time. Watch Blue, 95. Just kind of size him up. And he's just going to shadow drill with him. Whichever way he goes, I'm going to go. I may not go and get the tackle, but I'm not going to let him get around me and make a big play. Excellent job by the senior, Larry Blue. A 20-yard attempt for Doug Bryant from a tough angle from the right pass mark. But no problem for Bryant, as you would expect with the kind of year he is having. Two long drives for the Golden Bears, but only a couple of field goals to show for it. 2.45 left in the first quarter. 6-0 California. Doug Bryan has kicked two field goals for California, and that's great news for the Big Brothers and Big Sisters organization in the Berkeley area, as Doug this year organized a campaign in which individuals and corporations donate money to the Big Brothers and Big Sisters. For every Cal field goal this season, coming into tonight, they had raised approximately $20,000 for that worthy cause, and he's a terrific guy, Doug Bryan, an excellent student, spent the summer touring Europe. You know, it's amazing. He even got the Stanford football team to donate a dollar for every kick that he makes, and that's their arch rival. I mean, you got to be quite a diplomat to pull that off. Brian with a very high kickoff. Brian Terry flies to take an eight. Let's check in with Dave Sims. All right, John, thank you very much. I was talking to Gerard Willard, the All-American middle linebacker for Cal. He said, I'm still trying to get a feel for this game. He said, Iowa runs a lot of funky things where they'll go unbalanced line, shotgun, and all kinds of things. So he's still trying to get a handle, but he likes the way, obviously, the, the offense has been playing to this point. Back to you, Sean. Yeah, he hasn't had much time to get a handle. Iowa's only been on the field offensively for three plays. They've had a time of possession of one minute and ten seconds. Cal's had the ball for 11 minutes and five seconds here in the first quarter. From the 20, first and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Burmeister, very deep drop, and now he'll run out to the 23-yard line. Tripped up by Bill Ayer. Smart decision by Burmeister. You know, sometimes he has a tendency to maybe hold the football a little bit too long. This time he makes a quick decision. It's not there. I don't want to throw a bad throw. I don't want to take a sack. I'll tuck the ball under my arm and make a run for it. You can see, once he makes up his mind, he goes straight ahead. He doesn't try to juke anybody. He knows he's not going to outrun anybody, but he makes a nice play. Nice decision by Burmeister. He's a native of the home of the University of Iowa, Iowa City. Grew up going to Hawkeye games with a young boy. He sneak in the Hawkeye game. Short drop this time, and the throw is too high. Headed for Demo Odom. I think first down is going to be the critical down for the Iowa offense. I don't think Cal will be as inclined to blitz on first down, but second down and long, they're going to really come, and you can see they're bringing about seven guys. Burmeister's going to take one late right here. Coming in from the backside, that's Dwayne Clemens. He's looking for a call. Maybe should have got one on mm -hmm. that one. More than a little late. Third down and seven. Just the sixth play of the quarter on offense for Iowa. Inside of two minutes remaining. And another drop. That would have been good for a first down. The second drop already for the Hawkeyes. They appear nervous here in the first quarter. Ryan Terry had the ball go right through his hands. Yeah, another good decision by Burmeister. He read the blitz. He audible to the right play. They asked the quarterback to do a lot in this offense. He's got to read the defense and make the right calls, and he can't do any more than that. He put the ball right in the hands of Ryan Terry, and you're right, the Hawkeyes got to come up with those catches. Nick Gallery is the punter. And another booming kick all the way back to the 26. Matt Clisby. Returned it to the 29. A 52-yard punt by Nick Gallery. 
Thrifty Car Rental Bowl week continues tomorrow at 10 a.m. Live from the Orange Bowl, it's College Bowl game day with Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James. They'll preview the Orange Bowl and take a look at the last time Wisconsin was in the Rose Bowl. That's followed by the Hall of Fame Bowl at 11 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. A couple of 7-4 and four teams going head-to-head. -head. Michigan ranked 23rd against North Carolina State. Here's a battle of the Pac-10 and the Big Ten. Cal and Iowa. And the Golden Bears lead 6 to nothing. In the final minute, 36 of the first quarter. Sean McDonough with Todd Blackledge and Dave Sims. Flags down. Bar. Dumps it off. He's going to be in the illegal motion on Cal. I think the motion man turned up field too soon. They're going to back him up five yards. Paul Todd. Now he's a Vaki. Made the catch from the 44. He has not been used all that regularly this year by California. Keith Gilbertson says he understands the call after the explanation. Here's the major discrepancy in time of possession, which we were speaking moments ago. The reason for that is simply this third down situations have been much more favorable for California. They've been in third and four, third and three, where they've had the opportunity to either run or pass. Iowa has been strictly in pass situations on their third down attempts. So first down and 15. Rutherford turned it upfield, got back near the original line of scrimmage at the 28. Avoided the tackle of Mike Wells in the backfield, and Mike Daly finally took him down. Well, Mike Wells looks like he's a little bit tired out there in the first half. You know, when you have such a layoff and you're a big guy, when you weigh 280 to 300 pounds, it's tough to stay in condition, to stay in playing shape over that long layoff. And right now it looks like he's having a little bit of trouble keeping his stamina up in this first half. He was ready for every game by listening to heavy metal music. Big fan of Megadeth. And Metallica, I know you have all those down. That's another first down for California. Caldwell with his second catch. Good for 16 yards out to the 43-yard line. Let's take a look at him now. He's working on the All-American Stussy. You can see Stussy does a nice job punching and just kind of keeping him off. And you can see that's not really a threat of a pass rush that time by Mike Wells. Todd Stussy will be able to hold his own all day if Mike doesn't crank it up any harder than that. Caldwell late in coming onto the field. You can see him along the far hash mark. Just now getting the play from Barr. 17 seconds left in the first quarter. On the ground with Rutherford. He did well to score it ahead to the 45-yard line. And what will be the final play of the first quarter? Scott Sether made the tackle for Iowa. The first quarter dominated by California at the end of one in the first Builders Square Alamo Bowl. It's the Golden Bears six and the Hawkeyes nothing. California leads six to nothing in the Hawkeyes regular season finale against Minnesota. Hayden Fry became just the 13th Division I coach to earn 200 victories. We asked Coach Fry about that milestone. Prior to winning the 200th game, uh, I really didn't give it any thought. It, it just happened over a long period of time. Uh, I think the records indicate that in Division I, I've coached uh, quite a few more games than any other Division I coach, and I just now reached 200, so that means that I've been shot at and hit more than probably any other coach in Division I. <laughs> and he also dodged a few bullets in the first quarter tonight because it could be a lot worse for his team than just six to nothing when you look at the statistics from the first quarter. Cal had seven first downs. Iowa didn't have any. Cal had 119 total yards in offense. Iowa had six. And the time of possession was 12 minutes and 41 seconds for Cal. 219 for Paul Burmeister and the Hawkeyes. On second and eight, the reverse on the first play of the quarter. Damian Simeon has blazing speed and he's into Iowa territory. Spotted down at the 35-yard line. Another big play for Cal. This one covered 20. 
Well, Larry Blue had contain on this play, the outside backer, and he was actually in pretty good position. Now, he read the reverse. Look at the bottom of your screen, number 95. He sees the reverse, but he takes a bad angle, and that allows the tackle, Thury, to come back and pin him into the sideline, and that allowed Simeon to turn the corner and make a big play. Larry Blue's a veteran guy. He knew that he had contained, but he underestimated the speed of Damian Simeon on that play. Back to the ground, and Lindsey Chapman is inside the 30. Tackled by Larry Blue at the 29-yard line. Chapman, in addition to his football abilities, is also the president of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity on the Cal campus. And on every Sunday following a Cal home football game, Lindsey and his fraternity brothers go to the stadium and clean the stadium to raise money, money which they turn around and donate to buy food for homeless people in the Berkeley area. In the middle of the week on Wednesdays, they take that food and distribute it to homeless people in the Berkeley area. On second down, Barr dumps it short. Nice move by Rutherford. Mike Daly faked out of his shoes as Rutherford put on the move to gain 11. Jason Henlon made the tackle. Well, according to offensive coordinator Denny Schuler, Rutherford appears to be the heir apparent when Lindsey Chapman leads. You can see another dump off by the quarterback. Now watch this move. Boom. Just nice, quick lateral move. And I'll tell you what, that's something you can't coach or teach. You either have the ability to make that kind of a, a lateral move at full speed or you don't. There's Denny Schuler, the guy with his hand on his head right there in the glasses. Mm -hmm. the second a good from the left. Now. In his first year as the Cal offensive coordinator. He says Rutherford would be the starter on a lot of other college teams around the country, and he just had another good gain on first down inside the 15 and down to the 14-yard line. You know what's interesting about Schuler is that for the last six years prior to coming to California, he was a defensive coach. He was a defensive coordinator at the University of Oregon before coming to California, and he started his career as an offensive coach, but the last six years, I think he thinks, have helped him to be a better offensive coach. He has a better idea of what kind of things offenses have done that have given his defense's problems and so far it looks like it's working he's calling a masterful game right now Cal leading six to nothing they've been stopped and held the field goals on their first two drives Chapman couldn't get outside excellent play by the cornerback Scott Plate the senior from Brooklyn Michigan starting his 28th straight game tonight over three years for the Hawkeyes When you got a great tailback, you want to try to string him out. Don't let him get his shoulder square upfield. You see, nice play right there by Olenzak. He didn't make the tackle, but he forced Chapman to, to bounce it out to the outside one more time, and that allowed Plate to come in the cornerback and make the play. Well, another Cal drive stall deep in Iowa territory. This time it's third and six at the 14-yard line. They blitz, and there are flags that stop the play. Dead ball, false start, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Well, Iowa was, was going to come after him that time. They showed blitz, and they were bringing some people on the blitz, and a little jittery up there by the offensive line of California. Somebody moved early. So now Dave Barr and the Golden Bears are looking at third down and 11. Back at the 19-yard line. Really doesn't make that much difference whether it's third down and four or third down and nine or ten in this situation. Actually makes the field a little bit bigger for Dave Barr. Four wide receivers into the game for Cal. He has to throw short. And now Benjamin, number four, is stopped well short of the first down at the 13-yard line. Tackled by Mike Daly. It seems as though Daly has been on an almost every play here in the first half for Iowa. So far, Bill Brazier, the defensive coordinator, has guessed right a couple times when they've gotten inside the 20-yard line. He's gone to more of a zone defense, and that's forced Dave Barr to have to go to the underneath throw. A completion, but not nearly enough for the first down. A 30-yard field goal try for Doug Bryan. Ryan Longwell, the punter, is the holder. And he booms another one through with no problem. Three possessions and three field goals for Cal. They lead 
And welcome back to San Antonio on this New Year's Eve, the first ever Builder Square Alamo Bowl. And California leads nine to nothing, but they have to be a little bit frustrated as the Hawkeyes try to regroup defensively. Cal has run 31 plays already. Iowa's only run six. And Cal has to be thinking we should be much further ahead than we are right now. Well, that was Ted Gill, the defensive line coach for Iowa, talking to the troops. And the thing he's probably hoping for right now more than anything is that his offense can stay on the field for a sustained drive. His defense definitely needs a break right now. Ryan with a very high kickoff, fielded by Ryan Terry, and he slipped down as he tried to cut at the 16-yard line. It's the final now at the Gator Bowl. Alabama beat North Carolina 24-10. A lot of people were wondering if Alabama would be motivated for that game, having played for the national championship last year and had have a disappointing regular season. Gene Stallings said he wasn't worried, and obviously he knew his team best. Uh, Gene Stallings is a great coach, a guy with a lot of pride, and I think Alabama is a program with a lot of pride. I don't think there'd be any let down in that game. Cedric Shaw took a belt as he made his way to the 19-yard line. It's tough to tell in the traffic, but one would guess that it was Mr. Willard, number 45, who made the stop for Cal. Jared Willard, a junior from Newport Beach, he mentioned he led his team in tackles by 89 over the next bear, and he led the Pac-10 in tackles this year by 30 over any other player in the conference. And his greatest asset is his speed, his ability to run and make plays, plus he's a great student of the game, and he really knows offensive tendencies. Now coming on a blitz, and they stop the running play from Cedric Shaw for a gain of one. Eric Glenn, a true freshman, backup defensive lineman, number 93, out of Hayward, California, in the Bay Area, made the play. See, now, right now, Iowa is playing right into the hands of California's defense. As you can see, the discrepancy in the total yards. California is getting them into the second and long, third and long. That's when they blitz, and they're really stuffing Iowa right now. Again, another third and long situation for Burmeister. Hawkeyes looking for their first first down. They finally get a receiver to hang on to a ball, and that'll be very close at the 26. It looks like they are going to spot Harold Jasper short of the first down. Ricky Spears made the tackle. He is short by about a half yard. The Hawkeye offense gesturing to the sideline that they want to go for it. And I think they're going to. This is certainly a gutsy call. What Hayden might be doing right now is he may try to draw the defense offside. He may be going with the long count, and if, if worse comes to worse, you take the five-yard penalty and punt the football because this is a tough place to go for it when you haven't moved the football at all. Yeah, he's just trying to draw them offside. And then he calls the timeout with one second left on the play clock. Yeah, a little bit early in the game to be going for it on your own 26-yard line. 8.47 left in the first half. Cal will have the ball via the punt right after this. Cal leads 9-0 nearly midway through the second quarter. The Bears are about to get the football back as Iowa has the punting unit on the field. And not a bad decision by Hayden Fry. When, they've, when they're only down 9-0, they're still only a touchdown the field goal away from being in the lead of this ball game. Pretty safe decision right now by Hayden Fry not going for it. Gallery, short punt this time. Fair catch call for him. By Matt Flisby at the 39-yard line. A 37-yard punt. Here's Dave Sims. All right, thank you, Sean. As you might expect, a lot of long faces here on the Iowa sideline. It was interesting listening to Ted Gill, the defensive line coach for the Hawkeyes. He was in the faces of his guys saying, hey, listen, don't go through the motions. Let's get in there. Do a better job penetrating, and he hopes that'll turn some things around. Thank you, Dave. First and 10 upcoming for Cal. The Bears huddle at the sideline and then come right over the ball at the start of every possession. See, Hayden Fry has been spending a lot of time on the sideline talking to his quarterback, Paul Burmeister. And, and when you're playing a defense like this that really likes to come after you, you've got to hold your ground, you've got to stay patient and try to make some plays. And so far, Burmeister has not been able to make the play. Four-man rush, Barr 
Dumps it off to Chapman. And he is tackled at the 42-yard line. Bobby Diaco, backup linebacker, number 45, sophomore from Cedar Grove, New Jersey, made the play for Iowa. We've seen a lot of substituting by the Iowa defense because they've been on the field so long here in the first half. California started out 5-0 this season, including a win in the opener over Rose Bowl participant UCLA, but then Barr went down with a shoulder injury. They lost four in a row, bounced back to win their last three coming into the Alamo Bowl. Pass is incomplete, intended for Chapman. Matt Hilliard had the coverage. We talked about Mike Wells having to have a big ball game. Right here you can see he's a little bit slow getting off the snap. And then he's playing right into the hands of big Todd Stussy. You can see Stussy's able to push him away from the play. And in that particular case, Mike Wells is a non-factor in that kind of a play. He's not going to overpower Todd Stussy. Maybe there's some line that he's gone against that he's been able to overpower. But at 6'6", 305 pounds, he's going to have to try some different techniques against that big guy. On third and seven, Barr. On the run, finds Caldwell incomplete. He was juggling it and never did haul it in as he approached the sideline. Jason Olenzak had the coverage, but that looked like it was going to be a completion. Caldwell just couldn't squeeze it. And that was a whale of a throw, Sean. He was rolling to his left. He's a right-handed quarterback and threw that thing on the run. Watch this arm on Dave Barr. Again, he buys himself some time. And again, Larry Blue does a nice job chasing him and containing him. Look at that. He doesn't even have his feet set and throws it right on the money to Caldwell. That was certainly an impressive throw. Brian Longwell, the redshirt freshman punter, his average that you saw was third best in the Pac-10 this year. Jasper. Knocked down at the 23-yard line. Tackled by Kevin Cunningham. 47-yard punt, a 12-yard return. And will return to the Alamo Bowl on ESPN right after this. One of the landmarks in this beautiful city, the River Walk, that cuts right through the heart of downtown San Antonio. We spent a number of hours in the last couple of days walking along the River Walk. 9 nothing, California. We've been telling you, it is warm inside the Alamo Dome here tonight. Iowa still looking for its first, first down to the football game, and they'll get it here. All the way out to the 37-yard line goes Kent Paul, the backup fullback, number 31. And prior to that play, Sean, they'd run three plays on first down, averaged only three yards. That's what's been killing them. They get the quick hitter to the fullback on first down, and they bust it for a big one. 14 yards for Call. He transferred in from Colorado and sat out last year. He was the starting tailback for a while at Colorado as a freshman. The Hawkeye view him as more of a fullback type. They go to Call again. And a tough run out to the 40 for a gain of three. They have run the ball on every first down play to this point of the Hawkeye. Yeah, and really, when you get in college football, I mean, more and more, with the defenses substituting, and California is the perfect example, they substitute very liberally on their defense. If they can get you into situations, second and long, third and long, they can dictate what you have to do offensively. It's up to you, and really, first down is the best down to balance things out and come up with some plays. 6.38 left in the first half. 9 nothing, California. Second and seven. And again, the Bears blitz. Okay, tried to run through it and could not. Ryan Terry dropped for a loss. Back to the 38 by Jared Willard. You know, Paul Burtmeister took another hit late on that play. This was a draw play. He never even had the football very long. And he took a hit about 12 yards behind the line of scrimmage. It's a very aggressive California defense. And the way to attack it sometimes is going with the quick hitter. But that time, nice job by Jared Willard and the rest of the Cal defense reacting to the draw. Well, the supporting for Cal, Artie Gigantino, said the first key for the Cal defense tonight was to pressure the quarterback physically and mentally. And he had certainly seen them physically put some hits on Burmeister, who appeared to be late 
He's going deep for Jasper. And a terrific catch. Flag thrown on the play. It was going to be interference against Kevin Devine of Cal anyway. I'm not sure that Jasper really held on. They did credit him with the catch. Either way, it was going to move the chains for Iowa. And a great job by the offensive line of Iowa picking up the blitz. Paul Burmeister reading it, hanging in the pocket, and delivering the throw downfield. Pass interference by the defense. Penalties decline. First down. And it's a 35-yard gain for Harold Jasper. Watch the line. Watch him pick up the blitz. They hold him out just long enough for Burmeister to see. Nice job changing assignments on the offensive line by the guards and the centers. And look at the end of the catch here, Jasper. He's an acrobatic-type receiver, and he made that catch clean and simple. He did indeed. Well, the first big gainer on the passing game of Iowa. Then they go back to the run, and Paul is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. They drove him back, but they'll stop the play at the line. Bill Ayer, the defensive tackle, made the play. What an Iron Man he is. Ayer's been in the Cal program now five years and has not missed a single practice or game due to injury. Well, the key to this defense is their quickness and their ability to penetrate. And it's a confusing type defense, very similar to the Washington Husky defense that gave Iowa a lot of problems a couple years ago in the Rose Bowl. On second and ten, Burmeister incomplete. There was contact, but no flag thrown. Ike Booth had the tight coverage as the ball was thrown into the right flat. It was intended for Mike Hornaday, a backup wide receiver. Well, Ike Booth was never threatened by the deep route. He made a great break on the football. You can see he never gave up his cushion. He was able to make a clean break right onto the football. Almost comes up with the interception. Throw the replay on the board, and some of the Iowa fans in the stands booed, but that was an excellent play by Booth. Well, when you're on the left hash, throwing the out to the right sideline, the ball's in the air for a long time. It gave Booth enough time to make the play. Again, they show blitz and do blitz, and Burmeister goes down all the way back at the 40-yard line. Willard was the first man there. Loss of 12 on the play. Well, the last third down, we talked about them picking up the blitz. This time, the line doesn't do a great job. They let somebody loose right up the middle. Now, if you're going to let someone loose, you want to let them loose on the outside. Don't let someone loose right up the middle because the quarterback is pinned in then, has nowhere to go. Jarrett Willard came right over the center's position and made the big sack there. He was a semifinalist for the Dick Butkus Award as the best linebacker in the nation. Very high punch by Gallery, and it lands about a yard deep in the end zone. Whenever you're playing a blitzing defense, you want to make a gap call. So your linemen will all step down. You don't ever want to turn a guy loose right up the middle. If you turn a guy loose, you turn him loose from the outside and make the quarterback get rid of the football. You don't want to turn a guy loose right up the middle. It comes right up the face of the quarterback. A nice job disguising the defense that time and coming on the snap by the linebacker, Jared Willis. 9-0 California. Just more than four minutes left in the first half. It's the Alamo Bowl from the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. Chapman. Up the middle for five out to the 25-yard line. He rushed for over 1,000 yards this year to become the sixth player to reach that milestone despite missing the game against the Washington Huskies due to an ankle injury. Every time he rushes for 100 yards, and he did it three times this year, he takes all of the offensive linemen out to dinner. He had three other games in which he had more than 90 but didn't reach 100, and he still took the linemen out to dinner. He by dinner six times for the entire line. Very generous guy. Hawley the catch for a first down out to the 35-yard line. Ten-yard gain for Cal, time becoming a factor. 321 remaining in the half. They stop the clock momentarily to move the chain. You know, Dave Barr's not going to remind anybody in a hurry of Fran Tarkington or somebody who really makes a living scrambling, but he has a nice feel for just buying himself extra time and allowing his receivers to adjust to his scramble and get open and, and come up with completion. You can see 68% completion on the season, 10 for 14 tonight, right on pace. Barr on target again to Caldwell. 
And he's knocked out of bounds, just shy of the 47. Good for another first down after a gain of 12. Damian Robinson knocked Caldwell out of bounds. Caldwell was second team all Pac-10 this year when you think of the receivers in the conference, guys like Morton and Stokes. Second team is quite an honor. With that crowd, three catches already for Caldwell. He needs one more. Ty Steve Rivera is the second all-time receiver at Cal with 138 career catches. Chapman. Right up the half mark. And into Iowa territory, close to another first down at the Hawkeye 43. And this is an Iowa defense right now that is two things. Number one, it's a little bit tired, and number two, it's back on its heels a little bit. Dave Barr and this offense have them guessing. They're doing a nice job mixing the run and pass. They threw a little screen right there. They're throwing a little bit of everything at this Iowa defense, and they're wearing them down here in the first half. So take a look at Mike Wells coming out of the ball game again. And you know, it is warm in here, and they have been on the field a long time. You want to try to keep as many fresh legs in there as you can on defense. And they're just short of the first down. More or less a free play upcoming for Cal on second and inches. Keith Gilbertson. Just three years coaching in the USFL. John Hadel. The Los Angeles Express and his roommate was Artie Gigantino. Gigantino was coaching with the Rams and USC. And now reunited as the coordinator and head coach at Cal. And on second and inches, more than enough gained by Rutherford as he rumbled down to the 30, a pickup of 14. Speaking of fresh legs, California doing a great job rotating their two tailbacks. Chapman and Rutherford, they're keeping each one of them fresh. They're both coming in and running the ball very effectively for the Bears. 12 to 2 in favor of Cal. The first downs now. Well, Gilbertson still hasn't seen his team put up a touchdown, like dominating the entire first half. It has 2.13 remaining. Dave Barr. Through short to Johnny Tavaki. And he's close to another first down. Needed to reach the 20, and he's about a half yard short. Pat Boone, number four made the play for Iowa. You know, being from the Bay Area, Dave Barr got a chance to watch Joe Montana play quarterback for so many years for the 49ers, probably his favorite guy to watch. And one of the things that he liked about Montana was his ability or his deciding to take what the defense gives you. That time, Iowa dropped everybody into zone. He was looking downfield, but he's not opposed to just dumping it off to the back, picking up five, six, seven yards. Brings up another great situation at second and one. Blitz, and they got him. Back at the 30-yard line, Matt Hilliard, the linebacker, dropped far for the big loss. Well, Iowa's defense has been in dire need of a big play. This time they fooled Dave Barr. He never saw Hilliard coming until it was too late. A nice disguise by the Iowa defense. Hilliard came unblocked and came up with the big sack. And California has used its first timeout with a minute 22 remaining in the first half. They're looking at third and 10 when we come back. On this last play, the sack by Matt Hilliard. This is the fullback, Holly. Now he's responsible for the linebacker, Hilliard, right here. He's going to time the blitz and come late. And Holly's going to get caught up in the wash right here. Is not going to be able to make the play. Watch. Hilliard times the blitz. Now Holly is caught between his tackle. Can't get back to make the play. And Hilliard's in for the clean sack. Matt Hilliard, senior from Cedar Falls, Iowa. The high school teammate of Trev Alberts. The standout at Nebraska getting ready for the Orange Bowl. One of the few who got away in the state of Iowa from Hayden Fry. On third down and nearly 10. Barr again with all kinds of time, and again he runs. And throws. And it is caught. They credit the catch to Ihani Owezake inside the 10-yard line at the 7. 
That was dangerously close to bouncing off the turf before it was a catch. But the officials ruled it a gain of 21, and Cal gets another timeout with a minute nine remaining. Well, again, Iowa goes to a three-man rush. They're dropping eight back in zone, and Dave Barr reads that. He knows that, and again, buys himself the time. And look at the hands and the concentration by Uwezike at the end of that play. Comes up with a clutch catch. Watch Barr. He knows that he's got zone. He's got to scramble and allow his receivers to adjust to the scramble. And they do it, and they come up with a big first down. Whenever your quarterback scrambles, the receivers have to kind of forget the route that they were on originally, and they've got to react to the quarterback and move into open spaces. Good catch by Uwezike, the native Nigerian who came to this country at age seven and grew up in the Los Angeles area. Barr has hit on five straight passes. He's now 14 for 18 for 176 yards here in the first half. First and goal for Cal at the eight-yard line. They lead nine to nothing on three field goals. And we're just moments away from the Duracell halftime report live from the Orange Bowl with Mike Chirico, Lee Corso, and Craig James. And we'll give you a Sports Center update and we'll have our bowl blitz in another minute and nine seconds. Just one timeout remaining for Cal. Chapman to the six for a gain of two, and time runs inside a minute. Remaining now in the first half. And Coach Gilbertson wants them to hurry in and out of the huddle here because they do only have one timeout remaining. Yeah, you want to save that timeout just in case you have to kick the field goal. You don't want to have to run your field goal team onto the field to try a desperation kick. Save it for the field goal if you need it. Second and goal from the six. Play action. Fake. Touchdown. Mike Caldwell. Damian Robinson, number three, is going to be a great cornerback for Iowa. He's a freshman, but this time he's in the wrong place. Man-to-man -man coverage. And Caldwell makes a nice break, a quick slant pattern to the inside. He keeps the cornerback on his outside, and Barr puts it right on the money. And Doug Bryan knocked in the extra point. That's the fourth catch of the night for Caldwell. He now has 138 for his career. That ties him with Steve Rivera for second place on Cal's all-time reception list. Brian Treggs is number one with 167. And Dave Barr celebrates another touchdown pass, his 22nd of the year. Well, what he's so excited about, too, Sean, is the fact that they have clearly dominated the action here in the first half, and that was the first time they were able to stick it in the end zone and get a touchdown. They've moved the ball great through this first half, but you've got to put your team in the end zone if you're a quarterback, and Dave Barr knows that. An 80-yard drive. It took 10 plays and three and a half minutes. And with 35 seconds left in the half, it's now 16 to nothing in favor of Cal. kick off. We mentioned earlier, he's an excellent student, is Doug Bryan. 3.25 is grade point average in political economies of industrial society. A little bit later on, Todd and Dave Sims will engage in a conversation <laughs> about political economies of industrial society. We want to stay tuned for that. Yeah, that's the all-major team. You the all-name team. That's the all-college major team there. Doug's also a former member of the student senate at Cal. Had to give it up because he's a little too busy with all his other activities. From the six, Ryan Carey goes right along the hash mark. And a good return out to the 31. Only 29 seconds and two timeouts remaining for Iowa. The Hawkeyes have gained only 49 yards on offense in the first half. Hey, Sam Fitting, Sam. And Mike Caldwell, the senior from Danville, California with the first touchdown. And of course, it's history-making because it's the first ever in the Builder Square Alamo Bowl. Come on, Come on, See if Iowa tries to do something with the 29 seconds. They go to the run, and it's Cliff King out close to a first down. No indication of a timeout yet for Iowa. The officials will stop it. Very close to a first down. Mm -hmm. 
the way things are going for Iowa, either get ready to be right up here on the line and snap the ball as soon as they reset the play or use a timeout. But if you have decent field position now, why not try to throw the ball down the field and make a play? Yeah, I think Hayden is, is really conceding this first half at this point. I think he wants to get into the locker room, sit his team down, particularly his offense, and say, hey, look, we've got to do a better job on first down. We've got to come up with some bigger plays on first down so that we're not in so many third down and long situations. I think Iowa's average yards on third down has been third and eight or more. And I'll tell you what, it's tough against any defense, but particularly against an aggressive defense like Cal, to convert on third downs. They've got to do a better job gaining yards, run and pass, on first down. They were right over the ball and ready to go and they reset the chains and that's a first down. Out of bounds just shy of midfield goes Harold Jasper at the 48-yard line. 13 seconds left in the half. And that's a guy I think in the second half, Harold Jasper, that they've got to get more involved. If you can't get it to him throwing the football, then maybe use a trick play. Run him on a reverse. Do something where you can get the football in his hands and let him make a play. They decided not to huddle even though the clock stopped because the play went out of bounds. Burmeister, very deep drop, hit as he threw, intercepted. Lots of running room for Willard. At the 20, Jared Willard going in for a Cal touchdown. Absolutely what you didn't want to happen here at the end of the half if you're Hayden Fry and the Iowa Hawkeyes and Paul Burmeister he is the guy who threw the ball but give credit to the pass rush by Cal because they were right in his face now watch this rush come up the middle on Burmeister and he's gonna get hit right in the mouth he never even gets his arm through now he did throw it into traffic Willard was right there to make the play but a great pass rush from the outside by Cal forced the bad throw and Willard comes up with the play 61 yards on the return. Doug Bryan adds the extra point. Jared Willard, the junior from Newport Beach. The 61-yard interception return. And as we go to the half, it's Cal 23 and Iowa nothing. Look at that rush by Reagan Upshaw, 91. He's got 4-5 speed, and he just took the offensive tackle and put him right into the quarterback. Stay tuned for the Duracell Halftime Report live from the Orange Bowl right after this on ESPN. Sean McDonough with Todd Blackledge and Dave Sims back in San Antonio. The second half about to begin in the first Builders Square Alamo Bowl. The first half dominated by California. They lead 23 to nothing. The Bears will kick off with Doug Bryan. Three field goals for Bryan in the first half. Two touchdowns for the Bears in the first half. And the second was the biggest play of the half. The interception and 61-yard return by Jared Willard. And the third quarter is underway. Another good kickoff by Bryant. And Ryan Terry will down it one yard deep. And here's the big play of which we were speaking, the final play of the half and kind of a fitting ending. Well, watch Reagan Upshaw, 91, takes Ross Verba, throws him right back into the quarterback. Now, Willard makes a great interception, but here's the key to their defense, the speed. Couple Hawkeyes had the angle. Willard outruns him to the end zone, and that typifies this California defense. Aggressive and fast. And the reactions on the sidelines hold the story of the first half. Total domination by Cal. Iowa, first and ten at its own 20. And the Bears waste no time in showing blitz. And they do blitz. Burmeister, quick toss, caught by Jasper. That's just the fourth completion of the game for Iowa. And Paul Burmeister and all four of them have gone to Harold Jasper. If you're an Iowa fan, you may want to turn away from the television set as we look at the first half stats. Total domination by Cal. Get ready. Get ready. And the Hawkeyes come out without a huddle on the first series of the second half. First play, game nine. Back in just more than a yard. Cedric Shaw. Nice cut. 
Might have been able to stay on his feet. That might have been a really big game for the freshman out of LBJ High School in Austin, Texas, only about an hour and 15 minutes away. You're exactly right. If he would have been able to keep his feet, the reason that Cedric Straw is starting as a freshman and not Ryan Terry is because he has that breakaway speed. He has the ability to take it to distance. Michael Davis made the tackle for California. I think the reason we're seeing the no huddle from Iowa right now is to eliminate the substitution of Cal by their defensive coordinator, Artie Gigantino, trying to keep the same people on the field all the time. Pushing and shoving after the play, but King was the ball carrier. Bill Lang, one of those involved in the pushing and shoving, and Stafford Evans comes off the field apparently injured. Play gain one. Second down and nine. Call it a gain of two now, officially. If you're doing the math along with us at home, that makes it second and eight. Much harder to get all your blitzes called as you see Cal has to call a timeout now. When you're at the line of scrimmage and you don't have time to huddle up, it's much more difficult to communicate what you want to do in a blitzing defense. Timeout called by California. We've played a minute and one second in the second half. Still 23-0 Bears. ESPN's exclusive presentation of Bowl Week, the 1993 Builder Square Alamo Bowl, is brought to you by Miller Lite. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? And by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of 1994 Mercury automobiles. Another landmark here in San Antonio, the Tower of the Americas, built in 1968 in conjunction with the World's Fair. Hayden Fry has been in this situation before. You might remember the 1991 Rose Bowl. Iowa was down to Washington at the half. 33-7. to This is why they're way behind tonight. Punt, 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 punt. And the interception that went for a touchdown. Yeah, and they've been very ineffective on first down. Interestingly enough, the first first down play of this second half, they threw a pass, completed it. In the first half, all other eight first down plays were running plays. Following the California timeout, second and eight. First possession of the second half. Iowa at its own 38-yard line. Looks like their receiver moved along the far side of the field. It's a screen to Cedric Shaw. And he's collared out of bounds at the 45. Short of a first down. But it looked like the receiver at the top of your screen flinched a little bit before the snap. Yeah, the back in the backfield flinched, as did the receiver, Jasper. And again, we see the speed of Jared Willard. I mean, that play looked like it was set up for big yardage, and he ran all the way across the field and stopped it for a minimal gain. And you, you talk about a guy having a nose for the football, and that's, that's all fine and well, but he also has the speed, the ability to run from sideline to sideline, and that's what makes him one of the best linebackers in the country. And his coordinator, Artie Gigantino, thinks he's as good a, as any linebacker Motion in the country. Against the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. And he was a semifinalist for the Butkus Award this year as a junior, and Gigantino says the thing that makes him great is that he is on a mission to be great and is a tremendous student of film, always in trying to make himself a better football player. After the five-yard walk-off, second down and 13, back at the 33. Another blitz and a screen over the head of Shaw. And he took a little bit of a late shove from Kevin Devine. They have been coming after Paul Burmeister, as expected, since the game began. And the blitzes have been a very effective weapon for Cal. And you don't see that very often. They went with the exact same play. They tried to run the screen again to Cedric Shaw. They knew that it was a pretty good setup for the play, the, the down before. And they just figured Cal wouldn't expect the same play. But Burmeister was not able to make a good throw on that play. Only one out of five on third down of the Hawkeyes. They've averaged eight and a half yards to go on third down tonight. You won't pick up too many of them. And you have that distance to cover. Another blitz and another sack. Back at the 22-yard line. Ricky Spears came on the safety blitz and dropped Burmeister for a loss of 10. Yeah, it's just this, this is just Katie bar the door here. The, the tight end, Scott Slutsker, is going to try to pick up the outside rush. He doesn't even get a hand on Ricky Spears. Spears too quick coming from the outside and hits the quarterback from the blind side. 
Lucky Spears double for the baseball player at Cal. Played baseball last spring. Good punt by Gallery. Clisby with the return. Flags thrown. Back at the 33-yard line. Clisby finally went out of bounds at the 40. A 56-yard punt by Gallery. When the star of the night has been your punter, you know it hasn't been a very good night. Gene Works, the referee. Illegal block in the back on the return team. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Here's Dave Sims. A couple of notes down here on the sideline. Artie Gigantino told us a couple of days ago that he would blitz like crazy on Iowa, and he's certainly doing that. Every time Bergmeister goes to an audible, that brings everybody up. You're seeing that also. Keith Gilbertson, the Cal coach, said the only thing he's dissatisfied with is his team's plus 25 scoring in that red zone. Other than that, he says, hey, we're playing a real good first half, and they want to continue right now. Sean? Trying to become just the second Cal team in the last 42 years to win nine games. They went 10-2 in 1991. That's the only team in the last 42 years. Oh, and a baby! Nine games for the Golden Bear. On first down, Chapman got nearly the 10 for another first down. He's very close, and the officials stop the clock with the ball at the 33-yard line. Well, again, Lindsey Chapman, he's running the counter trap. You see the little hesitation now. He's going to follow the block, and you can see Mike Wells was there to make the play and just overran the play, and Chapman did a nice job cutting inside of Wells and picking up positive yardage, nine yards on that play, bringing up a second and very short. And again, Cal has been very effective on first down, both running the football and throwing the football. They put themselves in great opportunities to do either run or pass. And they'll keep it on the ground with Chapman. He has the first down. Helped it out of bounds at the 36 by Damian Robinson. Damian moved into the starting lineup for the final eight games of his freshman year after an injury to Tom Knight ended night season. You can see there's a, some frustration on the part of the Iowa football team starting to surface right now, both in that last drive when they had the ball offensively and even here defensively. Some extra things going on, a little extra pushing and shoving after the play. And all that is is frustration because Cal is totally taking this team out of their ball game and they've got them completely out of sync right now. And bloody. First and ten. From the 36, Bar blitz and sack. Back at the 28-yard line, Larry Blue came in untouched and dropped Bar for a loss of seven. Watch Larry Blue. He's going to time his blitz. The, car the tight end Carpenter goes ahead and releases, and nobody fades out to pick up the defensive end, Larry Blue. He does a nice job. Timing is coming off the snap. The, car the tight end released to the inside. Blue had a clean shot to the quarterback. He saw he was listed as a senior this year, but he was a little bit worried. In many articles at the end of last season, he was being referred to as a senior. He said after the last game last year, Coach Fry came over and congratulated him on a great career. It's a plain event. I'm only a junior. Everybody keeps, keeps saying that I'm a senior. He did have a red shirt here. He's back. Another blitz and another sack. Free football and a big break for the Hawkeyes as they recover it. Bo Porter came on the safety blitz and knocked the ball away from Barr. Well, there has to be a sense of urgency on the part of the Iowa Hawkeyes right now. They pull out all the stops. They come with the safety blitz. You can see Bo Porter does a nice job, comes right inside the block of the tailback Chapman. Chapman was there to pick him up, didn't make the block. A nice hit on the quarterback bar, and Hilliard comes up with the recovery and a big play for the Iowa defense. Go, go, go. <laughs> Iowa, first and ten at the Cal, 19. On the run and very little yardage on first down for call. Kent made it to the 17 for a gain of two. Tackled by Eric Zomal. One of the few happy expressions we've seen tonight along the Iowa sideline. We mentioned the 91 Rose Bowl against Washington. Iowa down 33-7 at the half. 
Peyton Price said he went to every exotic play that he had, as he calls them, in the second half. And they wound up making a game of that. Got within 13 points in the fourth quarter. Washington held on to win 46-34 in the highest scoring Rose Bowl ever. On target is Burmeister. And the catch. Good to the 15-yard line. Anthony Dean. That's only good for a gain of two. I would say that it's really paramount for Iowa to put some points on the board, probably a touchdown in this case. And you can see the Cal defense is not feeling threatened by this Iowa offense. They've got all 11 guys within about eight, nine yards of the football. Nobody is respecting anything deep by this Iowa team right now. And another third and long, third and six. That was the first catch for a Hawkeye other than Jasper tonight. Anthony Dean, the junior from Pompano Beach, Florida. Burmeister. Adjusting at the line, Cal comes on another blitz. Very deep drop and plenty of time. Now no time. Willard continues to have a huge night. Second sack for Jared Willard to go at the interception and the return for the touchdown. Well, this is completely in the hands of Paul Burmeister. They brought two tight ends in to hold the rush out. Now, Willard doesn't come right away. He comes on a delay blitz, and Burmeister held the football too long. He had enough time to get rid of the football, but he held it too long, and Willard came up with the big play. It was a delay blitz by the linebacker, Willard. Very long field goal try, 42 yards. He attempted by Brian Hurley, who has never attempted a field goal in college football and his first attempt is good the freshman walk-on who just took over the field goal chores from Todd Romano makes good on his first ever field goal try talked about Jared Willard coming up with the big play on third down he was on a delay blitz now watch when the ball snapped he's not gonna come right now he's gonna wait he's gonna wait until the back leaves the backfield as soon as the back commits to the pass pattern then he comes on the blitz and has a free shot to the quarterback Burmeister not only is he very fast and a good player he's a very smart player he knew exactly when to come on that blitz when he would be unblocked he's having a great night it's been a great season from on the football field it hasn't been a particularly good year 1993 off the field for Jared Willard. He lost his mother suddenly in April. Age 45, Carlene Willard died of the complications of bladder surgery. Big hit on the kickoff is Cherry and Clisby. I believe it was Clisby who ran the ball out to the 24-yard line. John Hartlieb. Uh, I know your name, the Iowa fans. A couple of brothers, Chuck and Jim, who were quarterback at one time made the hit on Clisby who held on in fact Chuck was an all Big Ten quarterback had a great career as a Hawkeye part of the reason I think Paul Burmeister was under so much pressure this year was the fact that coming into this year seven of the last ten all Big Ten quarterbacks had been Iowa Hawkeyes and Burmeister in the eyes of a lot of Iowa fans didn't seem to measure up from the 25 after the Clisby kickoff return 52 left in the third quarter. Barred trouble with the snap and fell on it at the line of scrimmage. There's Paul Burmeister talking with Don Patterson, the offensive coordinator. It's kind of a typical Iowa drive tonight, even though they scored, they went backwards after the turnover. They went minus six yards in four plays to set up the field goal. When you play against the defense like this, and obviously you can see Burmeister doesn't have very good numbers here in the first half and a little bit of the third quarter but you're gonna the defense like this is gonna make plays on you. you gotta just hang in there and hope that you can make a big play a team that lives by the blitz can also die by the blitz on second and 11 only a four-man rush that time Caldwell the catch good tackle to stop him short of the first down by Damian Robinson Caldwell now all alone in second place on Cal's all-time receiving list with 100 and 39, five of those tonight. This one good for a gain of nine. Watch how smooth Caldwell is. One thing he does, he never takes his eyes off the defender. He doesn't look down at his feet to give away when he's going to make that outbreak. Keeps his eyes upfield, makes a nice smooth break to the sideline, and a great catch. He made one of the most dramatic plays in college football this year. He caught a two-point conversion with a minute 17 left in the game against Oregon that capped the comeback. Cal was down 30 to nothing in that game and wound up winning it on that two-point conversion, 42-41. Great comeback in Pac-10 football history. Chapman, very close to a first down. And he appears to have it out of the 36. 
Chapman, 56 yards rushing now on 17 carries. And it is the first down. You know, the interesting thing, Sean, about this Cal offense in their passing game, last year they had an All-American wide receiver by the name of Sean Dawkins, who was a first-round pick of the Colts. This year they don't have that premier guy, but the combination of the four guys that are in there playing a lot, very productive, much more productive than they were last year with just one go-to guy. Again, moving along the line, and again a flag. It appeared the Hawkeyes were offside. Chapman carried out to the 43, a gain of seven. But if it is against Iowa, Cal might elect to take the down over again and go back two yards, setting up a first and five. Coming up Sunday, noon Eastern time, we hope you'll be tuned to ESPN for game day. Chris Berman and company will preview all of the day's NFL action. Then at 7 Eastern time, it's prime time. Nobody covers the NFL like those guys do. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and Robin Roberts. Then at Sunday, 8 Eastern time, the New York Jets at the Houston Oilers. The Oilers have already clinched the AFC Central with fighting for home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs. They've won a team record 10 straight games. And that is Sunday night, 8 Eastern time, the National Football League here on ESPN. Tabaki. They did take the penalty and took the first and five situation. Kabaki gained three out to the 44. Setting up second down and a long two. Mike Wells made the stop. Tabaki is a redshirt freshman, a guy they're very high on here at Cal. He's, he's a prototype looking fullback. I mean, he's six foot, 245 pounds. He's got that bulk to play a power fullback. The other two guys playing ahead of him right now, Marty Holly and Tyrone Edwards, those guys are just a little bit over 200 pounds, so they're not as big and bulky as Tabaki is. A toss to Chapman. And he's close to another first down. Just beyond the 46-yard line, Larry Blue made the tackle. Chapman set a modern-day Cal record, scored 102 points this season. 17 touchdowns, as Todd mentioned earlier. Eight touchdowns in the last two games of the regular season. First man to have four touchdowns in two consecutive games at Cal. Playing in his final game as a Golden Bear tonight. The statistical edge continues for Cal. And on the scoreboard as well, with a lead 23 to 3, the pass too high. Damian Simeon was wide open, running right down the middle of the field. Meyer hollering at Simeon. Looked like an overthrow from our vantage point. Maybe he thought Simeon didn't run hard enough. Well, Simeon's the fastest of the receivers. Iowa plays a lot of cover, too. Two deep safeties. That means the middle is a vulnerable position. You can see Simeon is running unmolested down the middle of the field and a little miscommunication. Barr thought he was going to straighten the pattern up. Simeon was coming more across the field, and they weren't able to come up with the play. Simeon had 32 catches during the regular season. Was honorable mention all Pac-10 this year. Wide receiver. 7-10 left third quarter. Over the middle again and incomplete. Intended receiver was Brian Remington, the backup tight end, and he fell down in Iowa territory as the ball was approaching. Of the two tight ends, Remington is more of the receiver type. Chris Carpenter is the blocking tight end and a good one. I really like this scheme of the California offense. They do a lot of different things. They really keep you off balance. That time they put the fullback in motion to kind of stretch the defense, and they ran the tight end on a little isolation corner route. The first time they tried to throw to the tight end, and he was open, could have made that catch. Well, that's Keith Gilbertson's reputation, known as one of the brightest offensive coaching minds in the country. Blitz on third down and 10. Bar. And very close to a first down. They have it. Niall Benjamin with the catch. And what a play by Bard. Looked like two or three times they were going to get him for a big loss on a sack. 
Well, I'll tell you what, you're exactly right. His elusiveness, I mean, he, he's so smooth about it that you don't really expect him to do it. But watch him. He feels the pressure. They come right at his feet, and he just sidesteps. A little stiff arm right there on Daly and buys himself enough time to make the throw. And again, that is not an easy throw. On the run, it's an ugly-looking pass, but effective. It's right on the money, and they get the first down. Great presence by Dave Barr, finding himself a little extra time to make the play. First and 10 at the Iowa 43-yard line. Rutherford, nice run. And he tripped up at the 38. Olin Zach came up from his safety spot to stop Bernard Rutherford. That's the old counter trap, the Washington Redskins counter trap, where they pull the backside guard and tackle, and you've got Todd Blackwell and Todd Stucey coming out there leading that play. That's a lot of meat coming at you, boy. Past the midway point of the third quarter in the first Builder Square Alamo Bowl. The Alamo Dome in San Antonio. This is the 10th play of the Cal Drive. Started at the 26-yard line. And that play goes for a loss. Back to the 41. Chapman thrown down by Matt Hilliard. Iowa went to a little bit of a different look that time. They went to a five-man defensive line look, put an extra guy down there expecting the run. Barr almost gets him with the snap count again. That would have been about the fifth time. In fact, he was offside. Lloyd Bickman was not back across out of the neutral zone. The referee didn't call it, and Iowa comes up with a play behind the line of scrimmage. Up to miss Lloyd at 6'3", 270. On third down. Chapman has to do some running. Puts his head down and pulls his way to the first down. They needed eight. He got ten. Down to the 31. Bo Porter and Mike Daly combined on the stop. You know, that to me is a sign of, a, of an excellent quarterback too, Sean. Is, is having the presence to just dump it off and let the guy catch the ball and make the run. I mean, you're only making about a two-yard throw, but it ends up being a long game because you're getting it to a running back, a guy who's used to running, making somebody miss. You know, a lot of quarterbacks, they want they feel like they got to throw the ball 20 yards downfield to make a good play. That time, he only threw it about two yards, but it was a big play for their offense. Rutherford tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Nice play by Mike Daly. He's had a good night for Iowa. He's been the academic All-Big Ten the last two years. He's a finance major with a grade point average of 3.2. He graduated from... Fairfield High School in the Batavia, Iowa area with a perfect 4.0 GPA. Lots of good students on both of these two teams, and that's not surprising, surprising given the quality of the institutions. California. Over five and a half minutes now on the drive and looking for more. It is caught. Touchdown. Ihani Uwezake with a 34-yard reception for the score from Dave Barr. Well, Jason Henlon is the guy who's going to get picked on here. Another little bit of a blitz. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Barr reads it, and there's no free safety in the middle of the field. That way he knows he can loft that ball all the way across the field and allow his receiver to run to get it. Throw him away from the defender. An easy touchdown for Dave Barr. And the extra point by Doug Bryan makes it 30-3, to California. Tahani Awezake with the touchdown catch, tapping a 13-play drive when the route is on in San Antonio. Third touchdown catch of the season for Ihani Uwezike, and Cal leads 30-3. One writer in the Bay Area dubbed Dehani the human scrabble tray, which you can understand with as long as his name is. We mentioned a native Nigerian came to this country at age seven. Grew up in Inglewood, California, Los Angeles. Said as a kid, playing football in the streets of L.A., he was always the last guy picked because he had no idea how to play football. He's learned now, came to Cal as a walk-on, and earned a scholarship. And his third touchdown of the year came from 34 yards. Seven possessions tonight for Cal. Three field goals, two touchdowns, one punt, and one ended with a fumble. And the 
reality of the situation has certainly set in along the Iowa sideline. Dave Barr has pretty much had his way with this Iowa defense. A good mixture of run and pass. That time he read the blitz perfectly, caught him without a free safety, and knew exactly where to go with the football. Another good kickoff. Shaw decides, hey, what the heck? Now, as much as we are, we might as well try to run it up. He only made it to the 17. Here's Dave Sims. Thank you, Sean. California, while doing a heck of a lot of good things here on the field right now, they're very socially conscious. They have a PK sticker on the back of their helmets. It's for Polly Quest, the 12 year old who was uh, kidnapped and murdered from her Petaluma, California home back in uh, October. And the big thing that they want to get across the message is protect your children as we go into the new year. Sean, back to you. And certainly, that is an important message. Unfortunately, in this day and age, we hear more and more of those kinds of tragic stories. That's what 94 brings an end to that sort of thing. Burmeister, a lot of razzle-dazzle, but the result is a loss. Burmeister wound up keeping it, and he's down back at the 12 in the arms of Blaine Clemens. Well, that's the first time they tried to go with the trick play, but there was so much penetration by the Cal defense that it never even had a chance. Burmeister tried his best just to get back to the line of scrimmage, which he was unable to do. 3.28 left in the third quarter. California leads 30-3. The quick hitter in Kent Call is out to the 20-yard line, still seven yards short of the first down. Tackled by Ricky Spears. There's some question as to whether or not Call would be able to play tonight. He dislocated his elbow in the regular season finale against Minnesota. There was a flag on the play. Dead ball. First of foul against the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. And that was something that, that you could see coming, Sean. Again, the frustration on the part of the Iowa football team. It's just kind of finding its way out right now in some extracurricular activities, a couple of late hits, and just some extra pushing and shoving. And really, it's just, uh, it's not a reflection of anything bad about the character of this team. It's just frustration. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have just not been able to get anything going here tonight. Apparently, Scott Slutsker was the guilty party, based on the reaction you saw, hitting himself in the helmet. Well, Hayden Fry knew what he was getting into here tonight. He said there was no question coming in that California had a more talented team. And he said this is one of the weakest Iowa teams that he has taken to a bowl game. And he came in at 6-5 and five and really only six wins. Not anything that you would consider a powerhouse. Hit delivered by Gerard Cherry as the throw came to the near sideline intended for Willie Guy. Welcome to the game, Willie. Well, see, this is when it's really fun to play defense. When you've got a team down this far, you can just lick your chops and really go for the big play, the big hit. Jared Cherry is not even going for the ball. He sees Willie Guy in a vulnerable position. He's going to put a big lick on him. Not only does he take Guy out, takes a couple players and assistant coaches out on the sideline as well. Gallery with the punt. And up by Clisby, who had to scoop it up back in his own territory, and he's down back at the 39. He would have caught it right at the midfield stripe, so the fumble cost him 11 yards. It was a 40-yard punt. And Clisby's upset with himself. Jeff Andrews credited with the tackle. Cal has it back with 237 remaining in the third quarter. And this Cal team has had a, a real bizarre season. And they got off to the 5-0 and start. And in that 5-0 and start, they were at, at one point in the Oregon game, they were down 30 to nothing in the first half. They come back and win that one in, a, in an exciting, crazy ball game, 42-41. to Then they went on that horrible midseason slump where they got crushed in a couple games by Washington State and Arizona State and USC. And then finished up playing great football again down the stretch. Bar. As he's done all night, scrambles effectively away from the traffic and alertly throws it away. It was a win over Arizona and another come from behind win that turned the season back around in the positive direction for Cal. They were down 20 to nothing against right. Arizona. 
and staring at their fifth straight loss that would have evened their record at five and five but they came back to win it on an Eric Zomalt interception return for a touchdown in the final moments that started a three game winning streak that got them to eight and four at the end of the regular season. Denny Schuler said that was also really the, the game and the coming of age of the quarterback Dave Barr the second half of that Arizona game. Barr's on his back back at the 30. That's the fifth time tonight that he has been sacked. Scott Sether, the senior from Winona, Minnesota, credited with the sack. Scott Sether is a guy who is, he's been a perpetual motion guy tonight. He's really had a good ball game. Again, he gets right into the feet of Barr, comes from the inside. Barr's got his eyes downfield, didn't feel the rush that time. Sether comes up with a big sack. Five sacks for Iowa. Several more if Barr didn't have his great ability to escape. They went to the run on third and 19. And Chapman picked up 10 yards, but as well short of the first down at the 41. Tackled by Olin Zach and Chris Jackson. This is just the second punt tonight for Ryan Longwell. He's also an outstanding place kicker, and he may take over those duties next year when Doug Bryant departs by a graduation. Minute 20 left in the third quarter. In just a few seconds, left in 1993 in the Eastern time zone. Do we have to wear these? We have our hats. We're ready to celebrate with our happy new year. We have our noisemakers. Where are the noisemakers? That's the noisemakers. Well, what time is it? A little bit of everything. I'd say here. that's right on my, my watch. we got about 10 seconds to the new year in the eastern United States. So from all of us here at ESPN, let us be the first to wish you all a happy new year. Happy new year to you, partner. Same to you, Todd. Happy new year in the eastern time zone. 1994 is upon us. Well, I guess you could say this has been a very long game. It's taken two years to play. <laughs> and a timeout called by Burmeister. It seemed like five years to fall tonight. A minute six left in the third quarter, so Iowa has two timeouts remaining. And Hayden Fry has won 200 games, but he probably hasn't had many nights on the sideline or days, for that matter, more frustrating than this one. Coming up Monday, the first big Monday of 1994. And it starts at 9 Eastern time with Nebraska against Iowa State. Nebraska 7-2, Iowa State is 8-1. Then the 1992 NCAA tournament game between Duke and North Carolina. Some say it was the greatest game ever played. Highlights of that at 11 Eastern time. Then it's Virginia and UNLV at midnight Eastern time as... Broly Massimino leads the running Rebels into action against Jeff Jones's Cavaliers. That's all Monday, big Monday, here on ESPN. You know, Hayden Fry told us yesterday that this would be a real tough challenge for his quarterback, Paul Burmeister, because of the style of defense that this Cal team plays. They're very unorthodox. I mean, they give you a lot of different looks, and they have really confused Paul Burmeister. Even though he's a fifth-year senior and has seen a lot of different looks in defense, you see this Cal defense has really done an effective job confusing him tonight with a variety of looks. And the blitz stops the run for a loss. Willard again the big play to put the quick hit on Cliff King. We're under a minute left in the third quarter. And again the Hawkeyes go without a huddle. Second and 11. Iowa operating at its own 34 yard line. Trailing 30 to 3. And they're all up on the line again. Eight men up, eight men rush. And Burmeister completes it. For a first down, Anthony Dean made the catch and took it out to the 46-yard line, a gain of 13. Well, the tight end has a very unique job here. You can see he's in the upright position. You see him talking. He's helping the quarterback, Paul Burmeister, find the blitz people, help make the protection calls. You can see he's staying in to help the blitz, but his job, as much as anything, is to relay to the quarterback, Burmeister, where the potential rushers are coming from. Fry says the stand-up tight end has helped Iowa recruit some excellent players at the position over the years. And 
Guys like Meyer Cook, an all-pro with the New England Patriots, Jonathan Hayes, now with the Kansas City Chiefs, yep. lined up a tight end in recent years for Iowa. Well, it's a real feature position, even though Scott Slutsker, I don't think he has a catch tonight, he was the second leading receiver on this team coming into the ball game. Second and seven. And this will likely be the final play of the third quarter. And a deep throw by Burmeister, intended for Willie Guy and broken up on the double coverage. Eric Zomalt was there along with Ike Booth. Well, Zomalt's going to make a nice play on this, but I think he got away with a little contact. I think he bumped into Willie Guy right before he was able to make the deflection. They're trying to go deep, and I think it's a good idea because they really haven't tried to threaten this defense with a deep throw. And Willie Guy's going to run the post. Now watch Zomalt. He's going to make contact right there, a little bit of a bump, and then he makes the deflection. Very easily could have been called a pass interference on that play. Three quarters in the books in the first Builder Square Alamo Bowl, 30 to 3, Cal. From all of us at ESPN, Happy New Year from San Antonio, Texas, and the first Builder Square Alamo Bowl heading to the fourth quarter. California in control, 30 to 3. Through three quarters, Cal has had the ball for 30 minutes and nine seconds, more than twice as long as Iowa. They've had it for 14 minutes, 51 seconds. The total yardage, 313 for Cal. Iowa only has 89 yards. And here they come on the blitz. And Burmeister dropped the ball and had to fall on it. On third down and seven, it's a loss. Back to the Iowa 44 and another punt upcoming for the Hawkeyes. And again, watch how Cal crowds the line of scrimmage and then everybody comes at the snap of the ball. They're trying to go with the running play and Burmeister took his eyes off the ball in the shotgun snap because he saw the blitz coming and the play never got started. I mean, just totally out of sync because of the aggressive style of the Cal defense. Calvary punt and a fair catch made by Clusey. 36-yard punt and no return. The fewest yards on offense in a game this year for Iowa, 201 against Indiana. They're going to have to go a long way in the fourth quarter to get to 201 tonight. They only have 84 yards in total offense. As you mentioned, when you look at your six wins, Todd, Tulsa, Iowa State, Purdue, Northern Illinois, Northwestern, and Minnesota, the six victories this year for Iowa. And Hayden Fry was honest in saying a big reason why they got invited to a bowl game was the fan following. The yeah. folks here at the Alma Bowl knew that they'd bring a bunch of folks. They sold all 12,000 of the tickets they were allotted. Chapman with a flag down. Stacked up at the 22-yard line. And the Hawkeyes were offside again. Here's Dave Sims. Hey, guys, one of the real courageous stories down here on the Cal sideline is tight end Chris Carpenter. He had an ACL interior cruciate ligament, uh, and he's hurting right now. But he had an operation back in the spring. He didn't come back till game three. Now he's playing with a, uh, a fist that's closed up due to uh, torn tendon surgery. But here he is, a senior. He's got one touchdown and just a gallant effort tonight by Chris Carpenter, number 87. Davey suffered that torn tendon in his right ring finger in the game against Arizona, postponed the surgery because he wanted to play in the yeah. big game for Cal against Stanford. He wound up having the surgery after Cal beat Stanford for the first time since 1986. Joe Capp's last game as Cal coach. You know, Denny Schuler made a real interesting comment to us the other day, the offensive coordinator. He said, you know, when we lost Barr to injury in the Washington game, when we lost Zomalt, everybody focused on those injuries. But he said, the fact that we didn't have Chris Carpenter for a full season, that was a real blow for us because when he was back healthy and playing, our strong side running attack was much, much better. He's a very big physical guy, an inspirational player, and he also won the Ken Cotton Award given to a, a player on the team every year for the most courageous play on the football team. He actually shared that award with defensive back Artis Houston. Again, moving along the line, this is probably going to be the sixth offside penalty against the Iowa defense tonight. They might turn it down, however, and they will, since the yardage gained on the running play by Chapman was more than the penalty would earn them. The 
Offside is the call. It'll likely be turned down. You mentioned Artis Houston. I'll tell his story in a moment. The penalty is refused. He hasn't played much tonight because of a hamstring problem, but he shared that award for courage with Chris Carpenter because he stayed in and did not miss a game this year despite the death of his older brother Cornell, an Army sergeant who was killed while serving his country in Somalia four days before the Cal game against Washington this year. His brother Cornell Houston was 31 years old, father of five. Rutherford out to the 43-yard line. Another quality gain on first down for the Bears, and he's going to take over in all likelihood, Renard Rutherford, for Lindsey Chapman next year, and you have to say, based on his performances of late, 84 yards against Stanford, 101 on just 13 carries in the last game of the regular season against Hawaii, and tonight they're in good hands or good feet. Yeah, you know, the thing about him, too, is he, he really appears to have a burst. I mean, Chapman is more of a punishing physical runner. Rutherford really has a burst, a quick burst, and gets that hole extremely quick. Second down and three, and Rutherford has the first down out to the 47-yard line. Tackled by Scott Sether. The attendance here tonight, 45,716 for the first Alamo Bowl in the 65,000-seat facility, which opened in May. And the staff of this bowl really deserves a lot of credit. You'd never know it was the first year with as well organized all the activities have been. Derek Fox, the executive director of the Alamo Bowl, Bob Generelli, the assistant executive director, Bob Coleman, the bowl chairman. It has been a terrific week for these two teams and for those of us from ESPN. Barr lost the football, and it's recovered by Cal. John Hartlieb stripped the ball, it appeared, and quick on the spot was Marty Holly. There is a flag down on the play. Cal players are indicating it's a holding call against Iowa. Holding by the defense, 10 yard penalty, first down. Well, the only thing that Dave Barr has not done an excellent job of tonight is holding on to the football when he has been flushed out of the pocket and contact's been made. You see the nice strip there by John Hartley, but Marty Holly, right? Johnny on the spot to come up with the fumble recovery. And Holly's a guy who's a former walk-on, and the coaches say all he does is produce. He just gets the job done. He's not flashy. He's not very imposing looking as a fullback, but he's been very, very productive for us. If you're keeping count, the first down is now 23 to 5 in favor of Cal. The score is 30 to 3 in favor of the Bears with 11 and a half minutes remaining in the Alamo Bowl. Dave Barr, real student of football, has read all kinds of football books. He's read the books written by Bill McCartney, Bobby Bowden, Bo Schembechler, Barry Switzer. He reads a lot of quarterback books. Joe Montana, Neil Lomax, Jeff Hostiller, he didn't have to you the other day, Todd. Where's your quarterback book? Yeah, my book is, is still... Uh, it's still being written. It's still, it's still being thought of. You can tell that he is he's really followed the game and followed the great quarterbacks just by the, some of the things that he does. His, his ability to, to find and buy himself some extra time and his use of the snap count. I've been very impressed with that tonight. He's really kept this defensive line off balance by his use of the snap count. Second down and six. And they keep it on the ground with Chapman. He has another first down at the 32-yard line. Dave Barr will be back next year. He's just a junior from Concord, California. He's at his home in Concord. Looks like Green Acres in his words. They have a couple of barns and a pet family pig named Audrey. Oh, Burmeister spent most of the night on the sideline watching the Cal offense in action. Chapman has rushed for 89 yards now on 24 carries. Bear in mind, Iowa still has only 84 yards in total offense as a team for the game. And uh, another offside penalty that would appear against Iowa. 
short gain on the running play to the 30-yard line for Lindsey Chapman. Offside. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. That's number six officially, and they've turned down at least one other offside call against Iowa. You know, the other thing that it does when you use your snap count like Dave Barr is doing, not only do you get some offsides penalties, in this case six of them, which is, is a real high number, but it also forces the defense to kind of sit back on their heels and they don't come off the ball as quickly as they would normally if they were anticipating the snap count. You can do a lot with a simple thing like the snap count as a quarterback. You can really keep a defense off balance with the proper usage of it. So another first and five at the Iowa 27. We approach 10 minutes remaining in the Alamo Bowl. 30 to 3 Cal. Barr flushed out of the pocket. And on the money to Marty Holly. He doesn't carry the ball much. As a matter of fact, as the starting fullback coming into tonight's game, he had more receptions, 26. Then rushing attempts, 24. That's a nine-yard gain for another first down. Dave Barr says Marty Hawley is part offensive lineman with his ability as a lead blocker for Chapman. Part running back, part receiver. And he does all parts very well. Came as a walk-on to Cal five years ago. And is playing in his final game tonight as a four-time letter winner. First and ten at the 18-yard line. And a chance for some of the reserves now to see action. That's the first carry of the night for Tyrone Edwards, number nine, the junior from West Covina, California, who divided time between fullback and tailback this season. He bounced around in the Cal program with a tailback in 91, then was the starting free safety last year. Had some problems and moved back to offense this year. He's also a long jumper on the Cal track team. Finished sixth. In the Pac-10 in the long jump this season with Tyrone Edwards. Second and seven. Iowa comes in the blitz. And Edwards slices his way to the 10-yard line, two yards shy of the first down. Todd, when they were 5-0, and oh, the Cal Golden Bears were ranked 16th in the country in the AP poll. Obviously, were it not for those injuries, they wouldn't have had that losing streak. They certainly would have won a couple of more games. And they're not in the top 25 right now. It's hard for me to believe there are 25 teams better than this Cal team yeah. we've seen tonight. Yeah, when they're healthy uh, and they seem to be hitting on all cylinders like they are tonight, it's no wonder that this team led the Pac-10 in total offense and in scoring offense. I mean, they have a variety of weapons and an excellent scheme. They keep you off balance, and uh, they can score a lot of points. And defensively, if your offense can keep you in ball games by scoring and, and really possessing the football, you can afford to take chances like they do on defense. They let the play clock run down to one second and use the timeout to discuss the third and three upcoming with 8.06 remaining. We'll be right back. What a great place to ring in the new year. The Riverwalk here in San Antonio, Texas. Sean McDonald with Todd Blackledge and Dave Sims. Delighted to have you with us. In the first Builders Square Alamo Bowl, Cal leads 30-3. to And Lindsey Chapman tonight has rushed for 89 yards. Iowa in total offense, passing and running. Has 84 yards total. Part of the reason there's been such a, a dramatic difference in total yards, and first downs, and all the offensive categories is the simple fact that Cal has possessed the football. They've run twice as many offensive plays as Iowa has in this ball game. The plays are 70 to 35. On third down and four into the end zone, touchdown, Brian Remington. touchdown pass barred to Remington second touchdown catch of the year for the senior Brian Remington 
And with 7.59 remaining in the fourth quarter here in San Antonio, the California lead is now 37-3. The Cal lead is now 37 to 3, and Todd, in my opinion, that's kind of borderline acceptable behavior in a bowl game, especially on the part of Cal, already ahead 30 to 3 with eight minutes to go, dominating the football game in every way to run a play action fake and throw it in the end zone. It at least raises the question about running up the score a little bit. Yeah, maybe rubbing a little salt in the wound, and the only problem, if that is the case, is those things have a way of coming back in and mm -hmm. haunt you in the future. I doubt that Coach Gilbertson could have been too concerned about the prospect of an Iowa comeback, given that Iowa has had 84 yards in total offense tonight and actually went backwards on the drive in which they scored their only points of the night. Brian, another kickoff into the end zone. Cedric Shaw brings it out. Cedric Shaw on the fly all the way out to the 32-yard line. We'll return to the Builder Square Alamo Bowl from San Antonio, Texas, right after this. Iowa got off to a 2-5 and five start this year, but they hung in there to win their last four. Coach Hayden Fry said the Hawkeyes learned a lesson in perseverance from the Iowans who endured the flooding this summer. Our players were aware of that, and they helped some of those people recover. And as a result, they witnessed firsthand the courage that the people of Iowa had. And I think that's the reason that we were able to hang in this year after losing a lot of games, to not give up, to not surrender, to keep the faith. And uh, here we are in the Alamo Bowl. Definitely the football team this year was a reflection of the citizens of Iowa who support the Iowa football team in almost unbelievable fashion. They had 65,000 fans for a game against Purdue this year. When Iowa was 0-5 in the Big Ten. It was 30 degrees and snowing. Flags on this play as Guy threw it away. Razzle Dazzle, Willie Guy, the sophomore receiver out of Memphis, was looking to throw, didn't have anybody open, and wound up throwing it away, and there were several flags on the play. Illegal block in the back by the offense. And apparently it was an obvious illegal black uh, block in the back by the offense because there were two or three flags thrown on this one. Well, Reagan Upshaw is the guy who makes the play again. You can see he stayed at mm. home in his speed. He's the guy who ends up getting blocked in the back, number 91. But not only are they a fast defense and an aggressive defense, but apparently a very well-coached defense, too. Here it is late in the ball game, and Reagan Upshaw is still maintaining his outside position. He's got to defend that backside in case of the reverse, and he was there and ends up picking up the penalty. And it's a huge penalty because it's from the spot of the foul, which moves the ball all the way back to the 12-yard line. It is first and 30. Upcoming for Iowa, 7.49 remaining in the fourth quarter. California 37 and Iowa 3. Burmeister like looking to the sideline for help. The coach just said, hey, run whatever you want on first and 30. Your guess is as good as anybody else's. They go to the quick pop off the left tackle and Cliff King made his way out to the 18-yard line. You know, you talk about this Cal offense when they're in a groove and when they're hitting on all cylinders. Well, their defense is very similar. I mean, this defense didn't play this way every game this year. They had certain games when they couldn't stop anybody. Uh, but but this is a game where they've got the momentum. They were able to establish something very early. They shut down Iowa early in the first quarter, and they've stayed with that philosophy. They've attacked this Iowa offense the entire football game, and they haven't given up. Second and 24. Burmeister has a man open. It's incomplete. Ryan Terry couldn't hang on to the football out of the 25-yard line. Burmeister is the step-grandson of the late Don Amici, the talented actor who just passed away not long ago. His stepfather is Ron Amici, who owns a restaurant in Iowa City. And Paul's dad teaches at the University of Iowa, teaches a statistics course. Third and 24. One out of eight tonight of the Hawkeyes on third down. They have 10 yards to go on third down. This won't help the action. 
four-man rush this time, and the pass is a little bit short and behind Ryan Terry. So the Hawks will have to punt. This is certainly not the way that Paul Burmeister wanted to end his college football career. You can see the frustration. They tried to run the, the seam route. The ball was a little bit underthrown. He thought Ryan Terry maybe should have come up with a catch there, but this is a frustrating evening. I'll tell you, I've been there. I've had those kind of evenings. And what will go wrong does go wrong. Benjamin on the return. He danced into Iowa territory to the 49. A 42-yard punt, a 10-yard return. Flag down on the play. Thrown on the return. Mitchell's out of the WEC conference tonight. They've done a good job, led by the referee Gene Wirtz. Illegal block in the back on the return. 10-yard penalty, spot of the foul. First down. And here's Dave Sims. All right, thank you, Sean. We're pleased to have our host here, Frank Bellicella, who is the president and CEO of Builder Square, the host of the Alamo Bowl. Frank, uh, thanks for having us in here. It's a shame you didn't have a more competitive game, but tell us what the Alamo Bowl has meant to your community. Well, it's been an important step for San Antonio to show the United States what kind of city San Antonio is. Uh, we're a very well-kept secret here, as you found out since you've been here. It's been terrific down here. Tell us about the origins of the game. Well, the same group, the Sports Advisory Board, who brought the Olympics here, they also brought this game here, uh, and they've worked on it very hard, and they've done a great job for an inaugural event. Thank you so much. You have a first-class facility, and thank you so much for all your hospitality during the course of the week. Thank you. Frank Bellicella, who's the president and CEO of the Alamo Bowl here, the Builder Square Alamo Bowl here in San Antonio. Back to Sean. He's the president and CEO of Builder Square, a company based here in San Antonio, and these days, with the money that gets paid out to the teams, there aren't bowl games. We don't have sponsors and volunteers. Over 500 people in the community volunteer their time to help pull off this bowl game for San Antonio. Tyrone Edwards ripped through the secondary and was finally tackled at the 40-yard line, a gain of 20 for the junior. And that Iowa defense, and as you can see, most of the starters still out there in the field, including Mike Daly. They have to be exhausted. Yeah, it's been a long night for them. And you mentioned the, the people that are involved in a bowl game. When I was in college, and Penn said I had the privilege of playing in four bowl games during my career. And that really is uh, the most exciting time for, for a player. To, to go somewhere for a week, to spend a nice week, to, to take part in all the events that they have. And, and being here most of this week uh, for an inaugural event, they really put on a good show. They really had it well it organized is. and had some nice events that, that involved both teams. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Sean Bullard, the third-string tight end just into the game, was more than a little bit anxious to get heading up the field. I doubt we'll see him throw the football, but Pat Barnes is the new quarterback. He's a freshman out of Mission Viejo, California. Very highly recruited kid. They wanted to register him this year. They didn't want him to play, but when Barr went down with a shoulder injury, they felt that they had to play him. He ended up losing that red shirt year, that extra year of eligibility. But he's a, a guy of six foot four, 205 pounds, got a big, strong arm, and they have awful high hopes for him. And when, you know, you can attract kids like that when you have a wide open offense and you build a reputation as a, as a good offense, a good passing offense, and a good offense for a quarterback to be in, uh, you can recruit some top kids. And obviously, Gilby has done that in town. Stay on the ground, and another reserve seeing action is Tarek Smith, number eight, in at running back. So a terrific conclusion to his junior season for Dave Barr, the Cal quarterback tonight. 21 out of 28, that's 75%. Even better than his 68 completion percentage coming into tonight. Barr threw for 261 yards and three touchdowns. And leading Cal to what will be this ninth win of the season, making this Cal team just the second Golden Bear football team in the last 42 years to win nine games. And with this win, Cal will also be the only Pac-10 team with three bowl wins in the decade of the 90s. 
This will make the Pac-10 record in bowl games this year, 2-0. and USC beat Utah last night in the Freedom Bowl. They have two more teams in action tomorrow. Arizona take on Miami in the Fiesta Bowl. Of course, UCLA battles Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl with this loss. The Big Ten now, 1-3. and three. And it wasn't a pretty day for the Big Ten as Indiana got throttled pretty good by yeah. Virginia Tech out of the Big East and Iowa hammered here tonight by Cal. And I don't think Dave Barr expected that it would be quite so easy tonight. He really respected this pass defense of Iowa coming into the ball game. They were the best pass defense team in the Big Ten. They only gave up an average of 163 yards a game. So uh, he just literally picked them apart. But part of that was the fact that they mixed the run and pass so well. And that guy there, Lindsey Chapman, you know, he carried the bulk of the load, really took a lot of pressure off his quarterback. And taking advantage of the situation to sign some autographs. He's a class guy. You mentioned that food program that he and his fraternity brothers have got going out in Berkeley. I mean, that's that's a real admirable thing to, to take time out of a, of a busy schedule as a college athlete, a student, and an athlete, and still find time to, to really go out and serve in the community. That hats off to him. Under three minutes remaining, another first down. Cal went for it on fourth and two and picked it up on the run by Tabaki. Now Smith spins into the middle. Not a happy homecoming of the state of Texas for Hayden Fry. Who spent most of his life living and coaching in this state. Native of Odessa, Texas. Played his college football at Baylor. He was the head coach at SMU for 11 seasons. And then went on to North Texas State for six. Before departing North Texas State to go to Iowa. But he couldn't understand why Iowa had had a single winning season in 17 years prior to his arrival. Everything seemed to be in place to have a successful football program, and he made sure that that was the case. On second and nearly 10, Smith outside and out of bounds at the 20, a couple of yards short of a first down. Coach Price said the first thing he did in trying to change the fortunes uh -oh. of the Hawkeyes is change the uniforms. Ball. And even if we couldn't play so like winners, I wanted us to look like time. winners because of the but colors. In, and he thought they should pattern their uniforms after the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he got on the phone while the Steelers were in the midst of their successes in the 70s. Super Bowl run with mean Joe Green, who played for Coach Bryant North Texas State for one year. Joe Green sent him a uniform. Actually, one worn by Terry Bradshaw. He gave it to the Iowa Pittman people. They changed the uniform around. Not only did they start looking like winners, but obviously they started playing like winners as well. Yeah, they got the exact same color schemes, too. You know, the, the gold and the black are the exact same. It's the exact same gold that the Steelers have, and the most distinctive part of that uniform is that thick stripe on the pants. You don't see that very often, the thick black stripe directly from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Certainly Hayden Fry has not only made his mark on the Iowa football program with the change in uniforms, but also establishing a winner there. He's really had a great career. Only three active coaches have more wins. Those three are Joe Paterno, Bobby Bowden, and Tom Osborne. A minute 25 remaining. First down's now 29 to 5 in favor of Cal. I think part of the, the way that you determine how good of a coach or successful a head coach is is also the kind of assistant coaches that he's produced and, and where they go on to do different things. Hayden Fry has obviously had some great coaches come out from under his wings. Including Bill Snyder, who won a bowl game with Kansas State this year. The Copper Bowl, here on ESPN a couple of nights ago. Barry Alvarez was an assistant under Coach Fry for eight years, and he has completely turned around the Wisconsin program. They'll be in the Rose Bowl tomorrow. I'm sure Hayden's hoping that Barry can help to turn the fortunes around for the Big Ten here in the bowl season too tomorrow because so far it's been rough rough sledding for the Big Ten. One and three with this loss by Iowa. Michigan, Penn State, and Wisconsin are all in action tomorrow. Sports Center comes your way next here on ESPN. There will not be another play in this first Builder Square Alamo Bowl. 
An easy win for Coach Keith Gilbertson. His first bowl victory as a head coach at Cal. They dominated the game from start to finish. And they win it by a final score of 37 to 3. thought it was a very impressive performance by Cal. Yeah, it certainly was. Dave Barr played as well as, as he could have hoped to play. 75% completion. He really picked this defense apart, and they mixed the run and the pass beautifully, and then they just suffocated the Iowa offense with their blitzing defense. Cal closes out the season with four straight wins to finish at 9-4. and four. Hayden Fry's club ends the year at 6-6. Six and six. Now for Todd Blackledge and Dave Sims, Sean McDonough saying so long from San Antonio, and Happy New Year. Stay tuned for Sports Center.